What are you planning to do this uh, Thursday, October 27th in the evening? If you're anywhere in the neighborhood, come on by and let's talk about some really controversial ideas that can change the world. But getting back to the original concern, if it is moral indignation, moral indignation should happen. You should be upset when people are not behaving properly. But moral indignation doesn't lead to violence or loss of control. Moral indignation means you are very much in your mind, in your sane zone, and you're objecting to something because it is wrong. So what is, what is it about anger? You never hear a person say, I stole your watch. Well, yeah, I stole your watch. You made me jealous. You were flashing it around, made me jealous. So yes, I took it. Nobody ever says that. But did I hit him? Yeah, I hit him. He got me angry. That seems to be justifiable. So two things. First of all, we justify the anger. He got me angry. Or cut that out, you're getting me angry. So when I get angry, uh, it'll be your fault because you're making me angry. And then to top it off, if I react violently, that's also justified. Well, of course I hit him, I was so angry. So we're justifying two levels of misbehavior. One is the getting angry, which is justified because, I mean, what can I do? You got me angry. It gets me so angry when people, <laughs> And secondly, well, yeah, when I'm angry, you can expect to get hit. Yes, I'm gonna break it, I was angry. So how do, we, how do we cure it, not control it? Now people can tell you, you, know, you need anger management. There is no anger management. Once you're angry, you cannot turn it off. Just like you can't reason with a child during a tantrum. When a child is in the midst of a tantrum, you can't reason with him. You cannot convince him that the tantrum is really unnecessary. <laughs> the kid is rolling on the floor and you say, this isn't necessary. There's nobody listening. So when you're angry, there's nobody listening. And that's part of the... Uh, that's part of the uh, distastefulness of anger. When you're angry, you're not, you're not a listening human being. You're not a thinking human being. The anger overwhelms. So the Gemara says, a person who gets angry is like a person who denies God's existence. What's one got to do with the other? When you're angry, God does not exist for you. There's no room for God or anybody else because the anger is all consuming. So for that moment, you are godless. So how do you cure the, the anger habit? First of all, you do it when you're not angry. You deal with your anger when you're not angry. When you're calm, when you're thoughtful, when you're, when you're open to suggestion, even auto-suggestion. So set aside some time in a nice, comfortable setting and put a little thought into why you get angry, why you shouldn't get angry, what kinds of things do you get angry about. You open the subject and you examine it like an intelligent human being. There's a group of mothers I was talking to years ago and they asked, is it okay to spank a child? 
I said, sure. They were a little shocked. I said, of course, sure you should spank a child. Just don't do it spontaneously. Sit down and make a list of things that you're going to spank your child for. What kind of misbehavior will you spank your child for? Write a list. Hang the list on your refrigerator where you put all your important documents. And then when your child does something, if it's on the list, you can spank him. If it's not on the list, you can't spank him. We were quiet for a few minutes. And finally, one of the women said, I can't think of anything to put on the list. <laughs> See, bingo. You have gotten a handle on your temper. When you're calm, sit and think, when will I allow myself to get angry and about what will I allow myself to get angry? And all of a sudden, it doesn't seem to come up with many reasons or occasions for losing your temper. That's because you're thinking. Once you lose your temper, you're not thinking anymore. So here's how the effect will happen. You will give it some thought, and you will realize that in most cases, anger is not even necessary. What's... What's to get angry about? Wasn't that serious? And it doesn't do any good. All I do is get frustrated and hateful and I accomplish nothing. So a couple of days later, something happens, gets you angry and you lose your temper. But somehow it doesn't last as long. And somehow it's not as intense because your mind has already cut back on the justification. It's not so justified anymore. And to prove the point, and we've spoken about this many times, a guy says, I, I hit my child. I lost my temper. I lost control. And I hit him and I regretted it. But I was out of control. I lost control. I said, did you hit him with a brick? He says, don't be crazy. <laughs> if you had lost control, why didn't you hit him with a brick? Because it's crazy. <laughs> so even when you were angry, you were not crazy. So why did you hit him? Because in your mind, there is a certain degree of justification. You can justify slapping a child, not hitting it with a brick. So even at your angriest moment, your mind set up certain, certain limits or certain borders beyond which you will not go, even when you're at your angriest. So it's not true that you lost control. You gave yourself a certain degree of permission, but not beyond that, because you're not crazy. You're not a killer. So the same is true with all temper, with all anger. We get as angry as our mind will allow. Never beyond. Question is, what reasoning, what argument, what theory gave you permission to get as angry as you did? Change your opinion. Move the border. Tighten it up a little bit. Now all of a sudden, even when you get angry, it's not crazy. Even when you get angry, it doesn't last for days it passes, you regain your, your mindfulness quicker than before. 
So, point of it is this. For some reason, of all the negative traits and, and emotions that a person may have, anger seems to have become acceptable. It's justifiable. Even what you do when you're angry is justifiable, at least to some people. So we gotta change that. Who makes it justifiable? Who said it's okay? Who said it's inevitable? I think that's the, the key point. If something irritates you, of course, you're going to get angry. Like it's inevitable. No, it's not. It's a myth. Anger is not inevitable. If you've already given yourself permission, then it is probable and predictable and you have you you have included anger into your into your definition of a of a mensch a human being a decent human being does get angry that's your definition like somebody what don't you ever get angry as if, what, are you not a human being? People won't say that about jealousy. People won't say that about greed. Yeah, I'm greedy. It's inevitable. We're not so callous about that, but we're quite callous about anger. So, Everything starts in the head. If you want to change who you are and how you react, start in the head. I think that's why when people act irrationally, they'll often say in regret, I don't know what I was thinking. You weren't thinking, you were getting angry. Why are you blaming it on your thinking? but it all starts in the thinking. What was I thinking? What were you thinking? And that's where Chabad, the system of Chabad, is probably the only real solution to anger. Because without Chabad, there's only one suggestion, bite your tongue. How, much, how many times can you bite your tongue before you start injuring yourself? And biting your tongue doesn't mean you're not angry. It means you're suppressing the anger. And if anger is wrong, you shouldn't be angry, even if you can suppress it. So a person who is trying to get past their... Uh, their anger. When it does happen, you should treat it like um, like burping in public. <laughs> oh, excuse me, I just lost my temper. It's so embarrassing. But not to say, hey, you got me angry. Don't be self-righteous about it. At least that. Treat it like an embarrassment, not entitlement. And slowly it will, it will shrink until it goes away completely. But getting back to the original uh, concern, if it is moral indignation, moral indignation should happen. You should be upset when people are not behaving properly. But moral indignation doesn't lead, lead to violence or loss of control. Moral indignation means you are very much in your mind, in your sane uh, zone. And you're objecting to something because it is wrong. Like when Moshe gets angry at the people or when God gets angry at the people. It's not personal. It's not loss of control. 
So there's moral indignation and there's self-righteousness. If you're being self-righteous, you're probably going to turn violent. Historically, that has been the case. If you're morally outraged, then you will then you will bring about an increase in morality in yourself and in those around you. We have a Sunday night program for VIPs that you might be interested in. It's informal, it's questions and answers, it's conversation. It's really relaxed, it's really pleasant, enjoyable, informative, and uh, kind of community-like. It's a Sunday night program, there's a um, Wednesday morning program for the VIPs, and there's a Wednesday night program. All of it, just conversation, casual, laid back, unscripted. So join us, take a look, click uh, the link below and see which, which of the three suits you best and join us for some enjoyable conversation.